Good evening, you are welcome again to Face the Press, and in this edition of the program, we are featuring once again the national chairman of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA, who is also the senatorial candidate of, of the party for Anambra Central Senatorial District. But um, from every indication, it would appear that Chief Victor May is not just going there to represent Anambra Central, but the Southeast Geopolitical Zone, I mean the Ndibo. Welcome to the program, Chief Sir Victor May Ohamadike. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. Yeah. And with me to interview him are uh, my friends and colleagues on my far left is Vincent Ujumadu of Welcome. the Vanguard. Welcome. And next to him is Judah Tupolazi of Fides. Good evening, viewer. Without much ado, let us kick off. I ask the first question, Ohamadike. Ohamadike, um, there has been so much hoopla over the postponement of the election. I know that you and others who are in the race, you know, we are bracing for 14th of February. But suddenly there was this, you know, uh, postponement. How did it affect you? Well, well um, uh, it's no longer news again. The election has been postponed to 28th of March and 11th of April. Um, there's nothing anybody can do about it. The, the Electoral Commission, empowered by the Constitution to conduct elections, had come out to announce a postponement uh, for various reasons. The most important one being that um, the security agencies uh, wrote that they cannot guarantee the safety of the election in terms of uh, safety of uh, electoral officials and the voters themselves. So at that uh, situation, there is no alternative than to rescheduling the election to uh, allow the security agencies to get their acts together. So the elections have been postponed. Uh, for us that are participating in the election as uh, candidates, um, of course, uh, the postponement uh, is not sweet to someone like me uh, because I have worked very hard. Uh, I have told uh, 54 communities out of the 58 communities in an Anambra Central Statue Zone before the postponement. So you, you can imagine the efforts I had put in with my campaign organization to win the election. So uh, I haven't shifted the election by six weeks. Um, uh, of course, uh, it will have a toll on any serious candidate in terms of uh, cost. Because it's like uh, starting all over again after concluding uh, the campaigns. Uh, but we, we differ to the decision made by the Electoral Commission, uh, which we consider, or I also consider, as cogent. Uh, if the voters' lives cannot be guaranteed, uh, their safety cannot be guaranteed, why should I ask somebody to come out and vote for me uh, if the person will likely be killed? So we prepare. The only thing is that um, uh, let's hope that by 28th of March, that the security agencies would have gotten their acts together. Okay, uh, Luna, let, let, no, let me. Uh, uh, you, 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 you just told us that you were in the field that you visited so many fifty-eight communities out of fifty-eight in Anambra Central. Yeah, fifty-four uh, out of yeah. fifty-eight. Yes. If you have, that, I mean, uh, what's your feeling? What's your assessment of the voters? You know response or reaction to you and, and given your experience do you feel confident and optimistic about you know dusting your opponents of course i, I would have won the election on the 14th of uh, february um i interacted with our people apart from visiting uh, 54 communities out of 58 at the time the election was postponed i had met with various stakeholders you know, a lot of uh, institutional leaders and uh, uh, people from all shapes of opinion. 
And I can tell you that uh, the, the way I was received um, can be compared to no other in the campaign. Uh, my messages were very um, distinct and uh, very convincing why I want to go to the Senate, because I went to them with my mission. Uh, I had a very strong mission to go to the Senate, and everywhere I went to, both traditional rulers, stakeholders, ordinary people, women folk, the shared, um, uh, you know, with me, my message, believing that uh, really I would deliver. Um, apart from uh, uh, the fact that I was telling them that I guaranteed them um, benefits that would be due to them, um, if I represent them at the Senate, I offered them uh, a stronger sense of mission um, in the sense that uh, going to the Senate uh, is not just going there for a joke. Uh, we need to um, give our people a very strong representation so that uh, the, the voice of the Igbo people will one more time resonate at the Senate. Uh, presently, we don't have uh, that type of strong representation. They acknowledged it. And uh, one thing that was a great um, credit that I saw given to me was my performance at the National Conference. Even children, uh, old women, old men, uh, leaders, the elite, they, they gave me strong uh, uh, commendation for my uh, performance at the National Conference. And going to the Senate is is continuation of that um, exercise. The National Conference was a, a, a place where people came to Abuja on representative capacities across Nigeria to discuss issues affecting Nigeria and their various people. And the way I, I, I put across uh, the feelings of Igbo people, I made demands at the National Conference. These are the things one will be expected to do at the Senate again. Unlike myself, that was telling them that the Igbos needed to be brought back to the table in Nigeria where they can uh, you know, partake in making decisions and getting what they are entitled to without hindrance. My opponents were busy going around promising transformers and, uh, and uh, boreholes. Uh, I, I considered that uh, misunderstanding of the purpose of going to the National Assembly. So uh, my message was quite uh, distinct from that of my opponents. Um, so the, the, the level of support I received uh, could also be seen from the frustration my opponents uh, started suffering. Uh, they started destroying my billboards and started removing my, my posters. If I, I, I wasn't a front, a front runner, nobody would be destroying my campaign uh, materials. So it shows clearly that uh, um, they are being frustrated uh, with the overwhelming support I've been receiving. Because when you go to people, um, uh, there was a case of uh, where uh, the APC candidate, Dr. Chris Gay, will come and say, APC, they will shout Abge. You know, such frustration was so, uh, so much there, very palpable. My opponent in the PDP had no other job to do than to destroy my billboards. So I, I, I didn't know what the fight they had with my billboards. Instead of joining issues with me um, on my mission and their own uh, mission. So clearly, uh, I was very confident that if the election had taken place, I would have won. Uh, my visit at uh, visit to Mbuka Obosi, Mbuka Mbo, uh, I don't think they've given anybody the type of support they gave me when I visited them. You can play them on television and see. You know, the whole place was uh, filled to the brim, and uh, ch with uh, people chanting songs of solidarity. It was like that in all the other markets and various places I went to. So uh, it gave me the confidence that our people really uh, received the message and that they know what they want. So um, extra five weeks to work. Um, 
I, I need to keep everything still in perspective, you know, so that the tempo is not lost. I have to keep the message continuously uh, <coughs> going to them, uh, so that um, at the voting time, they will know the purpose of the election. The election is not just about, uh, I like this person, or I like this. So it's an election that uh, will bring uh, the issues of uh, uh, resurgence of the Igbo people in Nigeria to major focus. Thank you. Okay. Then? Okay. okay. Amadike, one of the issues that came up uh, during the campaign was uh, your party's uh, discovery that your opponent, uh, the opponent of uh, APCA, uh, the PDP in particular, was feeding uh, double candidates. I want to know if uh, that issue is resolved. Do you now know who your who your opponent is as we wait for 2008? And again, there have been arguments for and against the use of card reader. Some people have argued that um, it takes a lot of time to accredit one person with a card reader, and that for people to vote, uh, we need as many candidates in the polling unit as possible. Do you think this will really solve the problem of uh, the selection to avoid rigging in one way or the other? Well, on, on the issue of uh, a double candidature or multiple candidature by the PDP, uh, Abga is a very low abiding uh, political party. Uh, the PDP people have been swinging um, in the courtrooms um, from the onset, um, uh, some set of candidates were published, uh, some set of names were published by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Um, along the line, the Court of Appeal reversed that. Uh, those who lost at the Court of Appeal had gone to the Supreme Court. So the matter is still pending at the Supreme Court. They are doing Dan Glover, who becomes a candidate. But for us, um, I think uh, uh, it is important that our people focus uh, uh, very strongly on the, uh, on, on, on the party that will give them what they want in the states, instead of talking about uh, uh, two or three candidates in party uh, B or C. If uh, we are agreed that uh, it is Abge that has uh, changed the face of Anambra state for better, very positively, uh, why should Anambra people be thinking about uh, a legislator coming from either PDP or APC. Uh, it will be a case of uh, monkey the walk, baboon the chop. Uh, it is uh, indisputable that um, Abga is responsible for all the positive developments and changes we have experienced in Anambra State in the past nine years. You know, so uh, it's very difficult to give up what is good. You know, you don't throw away what is good. It is in the interest of our people that they pitch their tent with Abga, you know. And good enough, uh, uh, our party has brought out uh, very credible candidates uh, in, in these forthcoming elections. So even have come out with bad candidates uh, that we'll be talking about, uh, you know, whether to look for elsewhere to get somebody. Uh, PDP cannot boast of the, the uh, array of candidates Abga uh, has produced for these elections in Anambra State. Is it in the central senatorial zone or in the south or in the north? Out of three senatorial candidates produced by Abga, two candidates have national honor, officer of the order of the Federal Republic. I'm Chivit Tume OFR, NS Indukwe in the south is Dr. NS Indukwe OFR. You know, you, you can see the distinguishing uh, 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 gap. Uh, Dr. Baze, who is contesting for us in the north, is a household name here. He has been part of the development of the state. He's served as commissioner for local government for about uh, six years. So uh, they, they, we, we have not come here with uh, people you can be uh, doubting their capacity or credibility. Uh, it is like that down the line, House of Reps to House of Assembly. So um, we've given an ambassador the best candidates possible in this election. So instead of uh, anybody uh, bothering himself or herself with who is the PDP candidate or, or, or who is not, uh, we should be talking about uh, choosing Abga ahead of all the other political parties. Vote for Abga all the way, and the state will continue to march forward without going backward. Uh, if we make the mistake of uh, 
abandoning the stability uh, which we have achieved in Anambra states through quality governance, uh, then we open the door again to the ugly past, which our people must uh, resist. Yeah. Then on the on the issue of Kadri, uh, I'm somebody who supports uh, a general initiative that is aimed at uh, improving or uh, making a process uh, credible. The the, the Kadri is an uh, initiative by the Independent National Electoral Commission to uh, stop the idea of what is called overvoting. After accreditation in a polling unit, maybe you accredit 200 people. Uh, you return a result uh, that shows about 600 people voted. Uh, that was what the Rack took to court against him, overvoting, you know, where in some uh, places, uh, uh, the, the, the 250 people will be accredited and the, the result sheet will be that about 700 people voted you know um, uh, with that uh, you return someone who has lost an election a uh, winner the cadre is purely uh, aimed at ensuring proper record of people who have been accredited to vote in any polling unit within a designated time as a card reader accredits people, it makes transmission to the central server about how many people have been accredited in this police unit. If it is something like 180, for example, you cannot make a return of 481 votes from that polling unit. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, it's an initiative that was uh, um, uh, introduced to curtail the 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 ability of desperate politicians from inflating a uh, number of votes cast in polling units to steal victory against uh, uh, the opponents who may not have uh, strong agents in those places. They just write results and bring out. So to that extent, um, I support the use of card reader and my party supports the use of card reader. Um, nobody should be afraid of a transparent process. Uh, if you look at it, in Anambra State, for example, the PDP elements are pushing for the uh, throwing away of a card reader so that they have room to manipulate the election. Because I know their design and their plan, uh, I've been speaking very strongly in support of the uh, use of card reader. Whatever um, uh, may happen uh, in the use of the card reader will not be peculiar to a particular party. It will affect everybody. You know. So uh, the card reader has a uh, uh, succeeded in Kenyan election, in Ghana, you know, um, abroad, elsewhere in the United States, uh, Britain, of course, civilized democracies, they use card reader. You know, some of them even vote online without using card because uh, the identity of every voter is known, you know, electronically abroad. So um, I think it is a, a good thing, particularly now that our elections are driving uh, towards a controversy that will do everything to ensure that what happens at the polling unit should not be disputed by people. Good. Um, Ahmadike, first of all, um, let me draw attention to the seeming violent campaign being introduced in the state, you know, which has seen uh, your billboards and the posters defaced. Um, and, and also the incident attack where the governor was attacked. Um, who do you think is responsible for all those things? That's one. And secondly, yesterday, on, on, on Tuesday, there was an advertorial in the Vanguard where some people that said they were concerned in the Amber State alleged that APCA has been working against Jonathan's uh, ambition by, by uh, teaming up with APC elements. So they gave examples, say the governor recently Gave him again his emoluments as governor when he was not supposed to be governor in the first place, as agreed by the Supreme Court, and that um, he was going to step down for you. So they made a lot of allegations to, to prove that APC and Afghan were working together against the interest of President Gulajilata. So, how do you see this? Thing? <laughs> On the spread of violence uh, introduced in the electoral process uh, during the campaigns, well, uh, it's very unfortunate. 
um, uh, I will say clearly that uh, we are not uh, guessing uh, the people behind the violent uh, uh, attacks which uh, we've been experiencing. My big boss have been destroyed by Uche Kumifa and her agents. You know, it's very obvious. Uh, last night again, um, every night some miscreants use our uh, campaign buses to go around in the dead of the night to remove other people's posters and place our own posters at the dead of night. Uh, somebody was calling me around 1 a.m. Uh, this morning, uh, telling me again that uh, her two buses uh, uh, conveying people we are uh, removing uh, uh, posters and they, they accosted them. You know, two days ago, they fought with them around the Hamaba bypass where they were removing my posters again. They will come with uh, uh, branded uh, buses to do this is around 5 30 in the morning. So, uh, you see, uh, I think uh, it's very crude for people who are unsure of themselves to get into elections. If you say, I'm going to beat you messily, what you do is to subject yourself to a peaceful campaign exercise and allow the people to vote so that they will choose you ahead of women. So if you make claims that uh, uh, that cannot match what happens in reality on the ground, you, became, you become frustrated and desperate. I think it's an act of desperation for them to destroy my billboards. On the attack on the uh, uh, governor of Anambra State and the uh, our, our humble selves when we went to Agro. You don't need to go far to know uh, who was behind it. Uh, Ubi had said that uh, when he was campaigning for governor, he did not campaign at Alo. He never he had never campaigned at the hometown of his opponents. Why should we contact Agro to campaign? But it's, it's an empty argument because Ubi is not contesting any election. Um, uh, more than anything else, even if he's contesting an election, you cannot prevent anybody from coming to your community. If you go to my hometown, Aglozibo now, go to my Oye Market Square, you see giant billboard of Dr. Chris Ngig of APC mounted there. Nobody tampers with it. I mean, that will not make my people to vote for APC. Uh, but uh, because of, um, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it, uh, uh, because of an attitude of uh, trying to fight somebody unjustifiably, you, you take laws into your hands. It's very wrong. So uh, people have condemned the attack. Um, uh, before the attack ensued, we had left the venue. The one of my campaign buses, which was trapped by traffic, was destroyed. You know, uh, I've taken it in good faith. I'm not a man of violence. In Anambra State, I've never used violence to pursue anything. Uh, it's on record. I'm somebody, even when Obi was rigged out in 2003, when they stole his mandate, I went to Minaj and told people not to take to the streets, that we have results of the election, you know, and we'll go to court to retrieve it. That was why when we went to court, I was a PW1 in his election petition. I proved that Afghan himself won the election, an election petition, without disturbing the peace of Ungi or anybody. And so also it has been over the years. Disagreement or, um, or collision of interest will not be a reason for anybody unleashing violence. If you go to Agro today, anytime they place my poster, tomorrow they, dest they remove them. My billboards, they destroy it every time. The one at Afagro was destroyed again the other day. So but, uh, these things do, do not determine. The important thing is that this red cap is already embedded in the consciousness of everybody who may is contesting for Senate. So as it is, um, I'm not somebody who is speaking to be known. I, uh, what gives me consolation is that uh, everybody from Anambra Central Senate will know that Chief Victor is the candidate in the election. You know, um, I'm already a household name everywhere. Uh, so if they destroy my billboards, they cannot destroy um, uh, my consciousness in the minds of people. People identify with me. If you get your phones today, you see people, volunteers, sending uh, messages to people to vote for me. And they, when they do those things, they, they write their names. They don't hide themselves. And there are people you can verify. So a lot of people uh, are associating with my mission that um, it's very critical 
at this time that our people must send people who will go to the center and fight for their rights without uh, any form of intimidation. So, and I have proved myself over the years. I'm for the I'm, I'm for Igbo interests all the time, hundred percent. I'm an Igbo man first before becoming a Nigerian. So, what they are doing, uh, I believe, is uh, misconceived and misguided. Um, and that is it for that. Then on the advertoria um, sponsored in the published in the Vanguard of yesterday. Tuesday. Of Tuesday. Tuesday. Of Tuesday, yes. Uh, I, I, I have not seen a time where people can be so mischievous in dishing out lies, coating them with uh, coating lies with sugar, you know, to look, make it look sweet. Um, in Nigeria, there is nobody who does not know that Abga supports Jonathan. That uh, the present governor of Anambra State is campaigning for Jonathan. That she is to me the national chairman of Abga is campaigning for Jonathan. Last Saturday in the Guardian newspaper, you will see an interview published by the Guardian why Abga is supporting Jonathan. Ume, you read it. I'm not supporting Jonathan because uh, he's my, my friend or anything. I'm supporting Jonathan for a very important reason uh, that the Igbos. Uh, have a very great chance of getting back to Nigeria in equal times if Jonathan becomes a president. He will implement the report of the National Conference. I've always said it. And that reason cannot change. Um, if it's because of I'm looking for appointment and I'm not saying that Jonathan cannot give me appointment, then I can change and start following somebody who will give me appointment. But this is an issue about uh, personal interest. Is about something that affects the life of our people. Uh, the political restructuring that Nigeria requires greatly is one that will help the Igbos. And we fought it in the national conference and uh, achieved that, that Igbos will be given an additional state uh, in the first instance. And that local governments will no longer be the federating, it will not be federating units anymore. Revenues cannot be shared to the present 774 local governments, which the, our constitution recognizes. For the simple reason that the, we, the Igbos, have the least. We have 95 local governments. The South South has 123 local governments. The Southwest has 137 local governments. Up North, it is wider. Kano has 44 local governments. Jigawa, that's eight local governments. And remember that there was a time Jigawa and Kano used to be one state. So uh, 82 local governments coming from one state, you know, uh, what, that, what it would appear to be. And the whole Igbos will have. 95 local governments in five states. These were the things we fought at the national conference and got very difficult uh, 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 task in getting mobilizing support for it. And eventually, we scaled through that monuments for local governments can no longer be shared uh, among the 774 local governments presently recognized in the constitution. All those local governments now give way. Funds meant for, meant for local government administration will be shared among the states. If you go home, you can create 2,000 local governments, if you so like. So it's an important milestone which we achieved at the national conference. And um, these are the things uh, the president had promised and pledged solemnly that if he gets re-elected, he will implement that report. So I think everything the Igbo man is looking for will be subsumed in the implementation of that report. That's where our problems will, will be finally uh, solved. So that's why we're supporting Jonathan. Uh, there's nothing that will make me not to support Jonathan again because of this simple reason I've given you. Very critical reason. And that's why Abga is standing by him. Let him win and go and implement that report and give anybody he likes uh, either uh, Chief of Staff, Secretary to Government, or anything. But that thing that will benefit the Igbos is implementation of the uh, National Conference Report. And that is the basis of our support for him. How can we now abandon that and start talking about Buhari? You know, they are trying to make uh, Nigerians believe that we are working for Buhari. I'm, I'm the only national chairman who had called the Buhari a, a coup plotter in the pages of newspapers. You know, and heavens did not fall. I'm the only person who has uh, challenged Buhari that he, they, his party did not attend the national conference 
APC boycotted the national conference. How will I give my support to him to become president to APC when he will not implement the report of the national conference? So you can see that uh, the, 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 what they publish in the newspaper is to uh, create a, um, a feeling of uh, um, insecurity uh, in the mind of President Jonathan uh, Wutabge. You know, so that they come here and tell him, give us the police and the army. Let's go to Anambra State and run Abga out. That's what they are working towards by trying to poison the mind of President Goodluck Jonathan that Abga is not supporting him. So that you now tell, okay, let the army die, <laughs> targeting the use of the army and the police to uh, uh, to uh, push out of uh, push us out of the way during the elections. They will fail. Jonathan is not a fool. But the, the consistency of our support for him uh, had been hinged on a reason that is unassailable. It's not something that can change. So he knows that we are supporting him. As they wrote that article last week, actually that article was written last week. I got hold of it uh, by Friday uh, night. By Friday night, I had seen the article, which they published on Tuesday. You know, And on Saturday, the, my interview on The Guardian was published while we are supporting Jonathan. So their story was coming out on Tuesday, belated, you know, it doesn't synchronize. Our governor had campaigned for Jonathan in all the rallies, vote for Jonathan. And we have always said, after voting for Jonathan for president, vote for the Abga candidates in the, the rest of the elections. We're very clear on that. So uh, I don't know what they want in Anambra State uh, at the National Assembly seats and the House of Assembly seats or Jonathan, for Jonathan to win. Because from what they're doing, it appears that they're not after Jonathan winning. Uh, they want uh, to go to the National Assembly. And uh, if Jonathan loses the election, that is his business. I can tell you that's what they're doing. Otherwise, how can a party that has manifestly continued to support President Jonathan and people who say they love him will be antagonizing that party? You know? We are the people who should uh, uh, be wary of what we are doing. But for the importance of what Jonathan can do for the Igbos, if he implements the uh, national uh, conference report, we decided to close our eyes. Uh, I was national chairman at the national convention of 17th December, where Jonathan was adopted as the presidential candidate. Nothing prevented Abga from fielding a presidential candidate. I've been issued. Nobody forced us not to present a presidential candidate. Would have presented a presidential candidate, that story would not be the same thing today. Because we'll be asking the Igbo people to vote for Abga's presidential candidate. But consciously knowing the implication, we decided not to fill a presidential candidate. So that if he goes through, he will be able to do that that is most important to the Igbo people. Buhari cannot uh, implement the report of the national conference. And that's why I'm opposed to his presidential uh, uh, bid. He has nothing to offer the Igbo people, you know. So um, I can tell you that uh, the people behind that are those who are trying to um, incite President Jonathan against Abga in Anambra State, in Anambra State, so that Jonathan will become angry and give them police and army for them to come and rig election and go to the Senate and go to the House of Rep and uh, go to get the House of Assembly and turn around to fight Governor Obiano. Uh, I think Jonathan cannot fall to that. The challenge I want to give to them is uh, if they feel that we are not supporting uh, Jonathan, let them tell Jonathan to ask Abga to stop supporting him. He can announce it equal so that we stay on our own. You know. So what they are doing is uh, something that is uh, clearly premeditated to cause confusion. In the article, of course, you will see the arguments that Ngige was never a governor and uh, would be refused to pay him his entitlements because he was never a governor. And suddenly, Obia not paid him his entitlements. That's why the Federal Supreme Court said he was never a governor. You know, you can see who the argument is coming from. It's clearly from Mr. Peter Obi, you know, as the one doing that. Along the same uh, WACT article, you know, they said again that the former commissioner for information uh, was sacked because uh, he sang uh, 
good luck when I advertise a, a support song. How, 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 how cheap can that type of uh, thing be? Uh, the of the K, uh, he's a disgruntled person. He was sacked by the government for insubordination and disobedience, you know, and uh, uh, attitudes or conduct unbecoming of somebody who is serving a government. He went to Blazer FM and claimed that he's the political uh, hero of Anambra State, that he has been responsible for getting people elected yeah. governors in is. Anambra State. That is the Akan <laughs> and that, uh, that Obi and who is his boss he is now a political neophyte that he cannot lead his, the party he was made leader of. And he was serving the government when he did that. So, what they wanted the Obi not to do was to clap for Jomate <laughs> But uh, Of course, uh, he was uh, booted out of government and uh, he's now running around everywhere to uh, tell lies against myself, against the governor against Abga, you know. In the infamous interview, he said uh, he's like a football player. And said, you can play for Manchester United today, tomorrow you play for Chelsea, if you're a good player. Then uh, Manchester, Manchester City can hire you the other day, uh, the next day, because you're a good player. So that is not something that is done in uh, party politics. Party politics is something that should be driven by ideology. You know, if, you, if you're in a party, you should stay in the party, and continue to pursue your political interests. People who jump from uh, party A to party B to party C are people that should be clearly avoided by everybody. You know, uh, the claims he made um, are things that uh, are laughable. Uh, one was that uh, in 2003, it was governorship candidate of UNPP. Uh, Obi was governorship candidate of Abge. In that election, the uh, Martin scored 123 votes in the whole state. Anambra State, the political juggernaut, scored 123 votes in the whole of Anambra State. You know, and he quickly joined Ngige. When Ngige was declared winner, he joined Ngige's government. I was always on television, lampooning Obi, that he was his boy in the CKC. I should go and see that, it doesn't do anything. You know, when we removed Ngige through the court in 2006, he, was, he started begging for a job. You know, and uh, uh, in 2011, he was campaign manager for New York for Senate, and I'm going to say 2011, through Accord Party. And New York lost woefully, scored 19,000, when others are getting about 800,000. He now left him and started begging for a job. That's how he found his way to Obi's cabinet. You know, so people who have inconsistent uh, character are people that should be uh, avoided. There are the people uh, writing all these things. Uh, they are blackmailers, if I, if I, if I describe them with the right word. Uh, blackmail will be a no, blackmail will be a blackmail uh, Abge. Uh, turn the president against Abge so that they will come here and rig the election. It will, it will never happen. So um, those things they are doing do not hold anything. So for that uh, claim that uh, will be a no sacked uh, Uzodike because he was supporting Jonathan, is uh, something you can only tell somebody who is daft in you know, order to buy. He was sent out of the government for uh, for insubordination and acts on becoming of somebody serving a government. Nobody would have kept him a day longer. And this thing he's doing is uh, consistent with his character. When he was in the seminary, at class four in the seminary, the same Jomati Uzodike, and uh, Monsaino Emmanuel Ote, later bishop of uh, Seluku, now, now deceased. Uh, sent him out of the seminary when he was being called Bozoz. So, uh, and today he tells people that he's the greatest person uh, in Anambra State. So, such people should not be taken for uh, anything. Uh, we are supporting Jonathan. Uh, the governor of our state is still supporting Jonathan. And But I said it clearly that that does not translate to an alliance between Afghan PDP. The reason why we are supporting Jonathan is for the implementation of the report of the national conference. That is the key, you know. Uh, beyond that, uh, we're on our own. All right, okay, sir. Um, when former governor be defected from your party to the PDP, the governor of uh, Akwaibom State, uh, you know, uh, um, Gosula Babio, said that APGA was winning the election here in Anambra State uh, because of Obi. 
and not the other way around. I mean, how do you react to that kind of comment from the governor of Ibo <laughs> State? I, I quickly, I quickly reacted at that time to say that uh, we believe in Abga is like fish uh, uh, living water. When a fish goes out of water, it dies. That's what I said. It was Abga that made Obi what he is politically, and for Nigerians to know him, you know. And you know when Obi left, he said um, he had gone to PDP to be a player in Nigeria and not a spectator. So what he first did was to use Abbe to acquire his playing boots. And then uh, remember that there is a central party. When you begin to see uh, or play back the things he said while he was a member of Abge, you, you pity him today, you know. It was Obi who said that it is better for someone to be a majority in a minority party than to be a minority in a majority party. Word on marble. He said it during our campaigns, and I'm sure they were captured. Very soon we'll look for them and start bringing them out for people to see. He said it is better for you to be a majority in a minority party than to be a minority in a majority party. So what is he is now is a, is a minority in a majority party, something he condemned in the past. In one of the campaigns, standing by my side, when I gave him flag as governorship candidate of Abga in 2010 election in a rally here in Oka, Obi said that nobody in Anambra State should ever put a vote for PDP, that PDP burnt down Anambra State, that PDP, when they were in power for eight years, that they shaved Anambra people's heads, you know, that our children did not go to school, that our state was associated with all kinds of evil things, PDP. And he said, we never should vote for PDP. So after staying in office, he joined PDP, and he's not telling our people to vote for the same PDP. It's a great contradiction in, uh, in character, you know. So these things they say, they think uh, they are buried. They are all recorded. So uh, running this election with blackmail and slander will not help any of these uh, people. You know, it's a campaign that is very clear. The government in Anambra State today being run by Abga and headed by His Excellency Chief Dr. William Biano is doing very well for our people. Our people are very happy with this government. You know, they don't have anything to contradict or indict this government with. That's why they have gone to much later, <coughs> fabricating lies and stories to incite the president against Abga, you know, uh, so that they can uh, be given the free hand to go and rig election. I have great vying information that Obi is busy in Abuja, you know, participating in meetings where the argument uh, also being driven forcefully by P2B that the results should be written in Anambra State so that all of us will be written out. And this was somebody who was written off in 2000 through result writing. Uh, we went to court, fought for three years and reclaimed his mandate. So now that he has left us and joined the the club of election writers, resort writers, he wants to force it on Abga. So uh, our people should be very watchful and be very ready to defend this territory. Uh, if this party does not exist anymore, I'm not going to suffer a personal loss as she victory. Me. The Igbos will suffer greatly. And that's why it requires our common uh, uh, effort to salvage this party and use it to support uh, Governor Biano so that whatever is happening in Nigeria, uh, we will have a safe state to start with. Nobody can deceive you that uh, dark clouds are not encircling Nigeria today. The, the, the signs are quite ominous that there are so much challenges ahead. And that is why when I see people who are running around say they want to go to the Senate, like the PDP candidate, Uche uh, Kumiga, I was laughing at her. She doesn't understand the, what's happening in Nigeria. She doesn't understand that Nigeria is going to be renegotiated very soon. You know, no matter who wins the election, whether it is Jonathan or Buhari, Nigeria will be renegotiated. Either result will pose, will pose a lot of challenges to Nigeria. You know, so it is important that we get people who understand um, the cards being played being played out. You know, I'm watching the cards because <laughs> I'm talking about the Igbo people. 
That's why I'm focused on the cards being played out. I know the cards being played out. Uh, she doesn't know the cards being played out. She wants to answer a senator. But I know that um, in the months ahead, in the years ahead, Nigeria will likely get to a lockdown where it will require very strong voices from various parts of Nigeria to renegotiate Nigeria. And that's the preparation we are making with this election. Our people must be sure that people they will vote for are those people who can go to the National Assembly and stand up. If there's anybody who is going there to stand up, it's me with this red cap. Nobody can intimidate me in Nigeria, whether you are from the north or you are from the west or you are from the south, south, wherever, no matter what you answer, I'm ready to face anybody you know, in a national debate. I'm ready to face anybody in a national argument in, on issues that affect the Igbo people. And I'll say it out, you know, and pursue it. So this is uh, the, the cross of the matter. So um, all uh, the antics to uh, disparage Governor William Biano, his government, and Abge, I laugh over them. Very soon you'll see leaflets which they have produced. Uh, they will circulate. Jomat Nuzadike went on radio and said, Obi gave me over 900 million naira, as he has evidence. I saw a leaflet where they said, I've collected over 900 billion naira, you know, uh, from uh, uh, Governor Obi as governor. I collected 500 million naira from Rocha as Okorocha. I collected 200 million naira from Soludo. I collected 200 million naira from Nicolas Okachuku, who is not even <laughs> in our party. I think somebody, my leadership, did not clear to contest for Senate, and also wrote it that I collected the uh, 200 million naira from him. I collected 500 million naira from uh, uh, Ivan Yoba. You, you do have a calculator here. <laughs> so that's <laughs> you, take, you take all these monies I've collected from people, and nobody is after me. Not even a single policeman is after me after collecting all these monies from them. They are printing these things which they want to mass uh, circulate to voters to say that I'm a criminal, I'm a thief. Why are those people I collected these monies from? Why are they not speaking? No. They are the people who should be speaking. If you take money from somebody, the person should cry loud and say, this man is a thief. None of these people has ever said, I took one cover from them. So you go and print it and tell people that uh, they should not vote for me. I'm a greedy person. Um, it is very unfortunate. So such a, a, a black men do not hold uh, water. When uh, Umbiano was contesting an election for governor, his billboards were destroyed all over Anambra State. Is he not the governor today? Wow. So uh, today my billboards have been destroyed. And if my billboards are not being destroyed, I believe that I'm not doing well. So it's only somebody who is uh, uh, unstoppable that out of anger, you know, they begin to destroy his campaign uh, posters and billboards. That day will come. God will help us. Our people will cast their votes, and their votes will produce their representatives. And hopefully, with every amount of hope, I'm, I'm looking forward to a victory, landslide victory in this electoral election. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Sir Victor Ume Ahamadike, OFR. Thank you for participating in this program. I will always assure you that we will give you more opportunities to appear on this program before the election proper. And uh, this is where we're actually drawing uh, the cutting. Uh, let me, don't, draw, don't draw the cutting. <laughs> let me, there's something uh, I brought to this studio, which our people need to see. This is uh, my statement, my stewardship at the Senate, our action senator, Dr. Chris Inge. This is something he published and is sharing, giving to people. And uh, this is somebody who has gone to the Senate on behalf of Anambra Central Senatorial Zone. Um, and jobs came up for uh, our youths, you know. The senators shared these jobs, and the ones that came to Anambra Central, see the employment list, is the one who wrote it, so that uh, I won't be accused of uh, this uh, employment list, those who gave job. Number four here is Ra Rashid Tunde Alabius, Somebody who holds BSc in accountants and from your state uh, gave him job 
senior accountant, Standards Organization of Nigeria. The other person he gave job is his name is uh, Towoju Olaide Oluwadare uh, from Oshu State. He gave him job producer, Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Another person is name his name is Musa Abdukarim Yinusa, BSc Structural Engineering, MSc Structural Engineering from Edo State. The first person was from uh, Oyo State. The second person is from Oshu State. I mean, to you a bit, or do a But that person is from Edo State. These are three states being run by APC. And I'm complaining about lack of jobs for our people because of the disadvantage we suffer in Nigeria structurally. Now, jobs uh, came, and instead of uh, giving these jobs to our people who are looking for jobs, he decided to use our quota to appease Yorubas and uh, people from Edo State. This is what is called the uh, wicked representation. You know? And it's going around looking for votes. Vote for me, action go governor, for continuation of uh, continuity of electricity, transformer, educational, classroom blocks, water supply, empowerment in all central electoral towns, sound bills and motions, motivational. Yet, in 2013, remember, the Daily Trust published a list of 34 senators that never sp uh, sponsored anything in the National Assembly. Nigel's photograph was on the front page among the 34 people. He is promising electricity. His own town, Allah, has no electricity, as I'm speaking to you now. For four years, I went to Uke. Uke has no electricity for four years. I went to Idani. Idan has no electricity for the past four years. And these are towns around the uh, Alo. People voting for Ngige. And yet, he, Ngige is the deputy chairman, Senate Committee on Power. You know? My town is from, is the Nanabra Central Secretary Zone. All these things he says will be continued. No one has come to my town from him. So that's it. And the worst thing a, a man can do to his people is to take what is due to them and give to other people. Uh, senators from Oshun, Oyo, and Edo took their own quota of these jobs and took to their people. And to appease the leaders of APC, he took the one due for Anambra Central and sent to uh, Oshun, Oyo, and uh, Edo so that he will be a good uh, APC leader at the expense of our people. This is what he published. Nobody knows how many things he has signed secretly with APC people to uh, undermine the interests of the Igbos. Because that is their party, you know. And this is the man they said that he's going to step down for me. Thank you. They said that he's going, in their publication, they said he's stepping down for me. And I'm hitting him with all these things along the road that we have alliance with him. He's going to step down. We are going to vote him out. He will lose woefully in this election. Because this is the most wicked action anybody can take against his people taking jobs meant for our jobless people and giving to people from Oyo State, Oshu State, and Edo State. And they ask, why is he not going to Oyo State rather than to vote for him? Uh, Oshu State, let them vote for him. The people from Edo vote for him. He's going around Central now with the broom, asking for votes. When the dividends come, he'll give it to Oshun, Oyo, Ondo, Ogun, uh, where, where the APC is uh, there. So that he put his head like this, uh, I'm an APC leader. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Thank you, Chifurume, for participating on this program. Uh, this is where we are finally drawing the curtain in this edition of Face the Press. Oh, sir, I shake your hand for participating. Thank you very much. Uh, our people should, uh, as a matter of uh, uh, importance, take this election very seriously. It's not about jokes, and it's not about uh, telling lies against people. It's about focusing on things that will affect our own lives and lives of our children. So we must look for people who are consistent. Uh, I've been here for the past 15 years. I've been talking about Igbo people. I've been talking about Anambra State. This type of thing I showed you that Ingegate did now, God forbid, if, if I get to the Senate, I'll give jobs to Igbo people from Anambra Central. That's their quota. And then no, look for spare jobs they are bringing and add. 
you know, not to take the one that we don't have and give out. Thank you, sir. Let our eyes be open. I also give my thanks to my friends and colleagues, Vincent. Good night. And Jude. Good night. I also say good night to you.